Hello and welcome to this maths training video. In this video we're going to continue our series on fractions. Uh, we've looked at what fractions are, what we can do with them, uh, we've looked at how to divide and multiply with them and in this video we're going to have a look at adding them together. Now this can be a little bit daunting which is why I've left it to last uh, so that we've built up those other skills along the way but let's get stuck straight into the material. So we're going to be considering this subject of adding fractions together. So the first uh, question that we've got here you can see is what is one quarter plus one half? One quarter plus one half. Now again we're going to examine this kind of pictorially to start with so let's have a look at some uh, graphics on the screen here. First of all we've got uh, a pizza so I always suggest thinking pizza whenever you're doing things with fractions and here we've got one quarter and we're going to be adding to that one half and the question is what does that become when we add them together? Now, a lot of learners, the kind of initial thought is to go, right, so let's say we've got one quarter plus one half like that. And their initial reaction is just to add everything up. So you do one plus one gives us two, and then we've got four plus two gives us six. Uh, so two sixths, and then if we're really clever, we realize that that's actually the same as one third. So is that the right answer? Is that how we add fractions together? If only it were that simple but it's not. However, it's not that much more complicated. All we've got to do is get these two fractions, these two numbers, into a form where we can add them together. Now, the way that we do that is, again, if we have a look at a graphic, you can see here our quarter remains unchanged, but if we change our half into quarters instead, that now looks like that. So you can see this shaded orange area here representing a half is exactly the same size as this orange shaded area down here. They both represent the same quantity, but here, instead of splitting our pizza into two, we've split it into four instead. So we've got the same quantity, but represented in different ways. So now we can kind of see when we look at this that we've actually got uh, something that we can kind of add up quite easily. All we've got to do is just transfer this blue piece here onto here and you can see there that then we've we've pretty much got the answer so that will look something like that so you can see from that we've got here now the whole shaded area the blue area plus the orange area is taking up three of those quarters that we'd split our pizza into so we've now got one quarter plus one half is actually equal to three quarters not a third as we initially might have said so this simply doesn't work. We can get rid of that because that's no good to us whatsoever. What uh, is good to us is thinking about it in these terms here. So you can see that adding a quarter and a half gives us three quarters. Let's look at another example and see if the logic continues down the same route. So we've got here one half and we've got one third. And the question is, what do they look like when we add them together. So what is one half plus one third? A little bit trickier here, but hopefully you can already start to see kind of the logic of what we're doing. So here we've split our uh, half into sixths. So you can see here we've split it into six equal pieces. Uh, not as we did last time, we split it into three into four equal pieces. So we took what we had here and did the same thing, but that won't work in this case because if you look at the area that's shaded here, and the area that's shaded here, they're kind of completely different shapes. So that, this, this shape here can't be split into uh, thirds, which is why we've gone into sixths. Now, if we bring up uh, this third now, you can see there that we've split that into sixths as well. And hopefully you can see now that again, if we add these two shaded areas together, so we take the blue area and we add it to the uh, orange shaded area here, What's that going to look like mentally? Well, let's have a little look at it. It's going to look something like that, isn't it? So we've got uh, this half area here is shaded blue and this uh, one third area here is shaded orange. But look at how many of those six segments that it's combined together. How many have we got here now when we add those up? You can see there that we've got the two orange areas plus the three blue areas, which gives us a total of five sixths. So you can see there that we've got five sixths as our answer for this one, one half plus one third. Let's look at a slightly more complicated example. So in this one, the question is, what is two fifths plus one third? Two fifths plus one third. So you can see here, here's our two fifths and here's our one third. And they're kind of 
they don't look like they're going to relate to each other very easily at all. And I've, I've chosen these numbers specifically because this is kind of a less neat solution, but we can apply exactly the same uh, kind of logic to the situation. So can you, looking at that, think about how many segments we're going to divide our pizzas up into in order to add these together? Well, let's have a look at it. You can see here we've divided that up. Now, I won't make you count them. I'll just tell you we've split that into 15. So we've split that into 15 equal parts. Now, there is a good reason why we're doing this into 15, and there was a really good reason why we divided the last one into six, and I'm going to explain that in a moment. But right now, we'll just you'll just have to trust me. We're splitting this into fifteenths uh, for a very good reason. So there's our... Uh, two-fifths represented as fifteenths and if you count up these segments here you can see we've got one two three four five six now bear in mind that this blue shaded area here is exactly the same area as this blue shaded area here they represent the same quality and that tells us that actually if i just do this at the top of the screen here you can see that two-fifths is the same as six fifteenths so they represent the same amount and again, you can see that because if we cancel this fraction down, 6 fifteenths, if we divide the top and the bottom by a number they can both divide by, so a common factor, you can see there that we can divide both of these by 3. So 6 divided by 3 gives us 2. 15 divided by 3 gives us 5. And if you're not sure about this equivalency of fractions, then please do go back and watch the video that I made on that because that's going to help you out enormously. Okay, so what will our 1 third look like when it's divided into fifteenths? Well, that's going to look like this. You can see again, we've still got exactly the same amount of area shaded. Okay, and again, this is a little bit more intuitive here. You can kind of see this a little bit more logically. We've split this into fifteenths, and here you can see we've got five of those areas shaded, and five fifteenths is the same as one third. So you can see here we've got another third, one, two, three, four, five, and then we've got another third here, one, two, three, four, five. So you can see there that we've got two thirds left over and one third shaded. However, we've divided them up into exactly the same number of segments. And what we're gonna do now is combine those two together. And you can see that when we add the blue shaded area onto the drawing with the orange shaded area, if we count those up now, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Therefore our answer is 11 fifteenths. So two fifths plus one third is 11 fifteenths. Now the reason that I've shown you all this is that when we start doing this for real we're probably not going to be able to start drawing circles with them divided up nice and neatly and thinking about what they'll divide into. We need a better method but this helps us to visualize what's actually happening when we use that better method. So let's have a look at the better method now. So we'll go back to our first question but there's no graphics on this page now we're just going to do this uh, by hand so we've got one quarter plus one half. So let's think about how we're going to do this calculation. We've got one quarter and we're going to add to that one half like that. So how do we go about this calculation? We know because we've already done this calculation with the pizzas that what the answer is going to be we're going to end up with three quarters but how do we arrive at that answer? Well, the clue lies in that original calculation we did with the pizzas, because what we want to do is we want to turn both fractions into uh, numbers that match each other on the bottom. So we want to get the same denominator at the bottom there. So we've got one quarter plus one half. So what we're going to do is this can obviously stay the same, so that's not a problem. But this one we need to do some work on because we want to turn this two into a four to match this one. So how do we do that? Okay, so let's say we're going to change this fraction now. In order to change that 2 into a 4, we need to times it by 2. So 2 times 2 is going to give us 4. And then, whatever we do to the bottom of the fraction, we've got to do to the top of the fraction. So there's our half that we had originally, and we're going to times that by 2 as well. And, and timesing the top and bottom by the same number means that the fraction retains its proportion. And we'll see how that's true in a moment. So 1 times 2 is 2, and 2 times 2 is 4. So we've changed that one half, we've changed that into two fourths. So this half has now become two fourths or two quarters. And now what we can do is we can replace this uh, two quarters. We can swap that out for this one half, giving us a calculation that's going to look like this. One quarter plus two quarters like that. And can you see now the numbers at the bottom are the same. 
So those numbers, we've done exactly what we did with the graphical representation with the circles at the start, where we changed the second fraction into quarters instead of halves. We've just done exactly the same mathematically as we did graphically a moment ago. Now, the rule now is when we do this is we don't add these bottom numbers together. So that number at the bottom just stays the same. Because what we're saying is I've got one quarter over here, I've got two quarters over here, how many quarters do I have all together? So we just add the top numbers together. One plus two gives us three. And there's our three quarters as an answer. Just a handy little hint here for future uh, kind of calculations if you go a lot further with your studies, is that actually we can rewrite this bit as the whole thing over four. So we can actually write one plus two over four. We've got a quarter here and two quarters here. And we're just adding the top row up to find out how many quarters there are which gets us to three quarters as well. That's just a handy little trick to remember that this layout means exactly the same thing as this layout, and that'll come in quite handy down the line. So there we go, we've successfully done one quarter plus one half without the use of any graphical aids, just by calculation. Let's have a look at the next example. So now we've got one half plus one third. So again, exactly the same as we did before, but this time we're doing it all with maths and not with pizzas because eventually Pizza's good, but it gets bad for you if you have too much. And the same in this analogy. So we've got a half plus a third. So let's have a look at doing this calculation. Now, what's the answer to this going to be? Now, this is a little bit different because in the previous question, we had uh, a half and a quarter, didn't we? And those numbers at the bottom, the denominators, went into each other. We could kind of see a clear relationship between them. But here, two won't divide into three and three won't divide into two without leaving uh, kind of messy um, uh, non-integers, non-whole numbers. We, we've always got something left over in this case, which is what we're trying to avoid. So we've got a half plus a third. What's the solution to this? How are we going to do this? Well, there is a trick to this, uh, and it's really, it, it couldn't be easier, actually. All you've got to do to find the number that we're going to put at the bottom is to multiply these two numbers together. So we're going to do two times three. So we're just going to multiply two times three and that gives us six. And this number now becomes our new number at the bottom. Now, when you're studying this at GCSE level, you kind of learn about the lowest common denominator. And that is really important. That's something that you do need to know about. But at this stage of studying fractions, if all you're trying to do is learn how to add fractions together, it's kind of enough to know that that number can be used at the bottom, even if it's not the smallest number that both of these go into, or that lowest common denominator that you've heard about, it's still acceptable for kind of performing the function of maths that we're about to do. So two times three equals six, so there's our number on the bottom. So we're gonna have some fraction that is a sixth, and another fraction made up of sixths, and now we're gonna change this half into sixths. So how do we do that? Well, we've got to look at what do we do to this bottom number to turn it into this bottom number. So what do we need to do to two to turn it into six? Well, we've already seen that, we times it by three. Whatever we do to the bottom number, we do to the top number. So we do one times three, which gives us three. So we can see there that one half is exactly the same as three sixths. And we saw that earlier in our graphical representation where we had that on the screen, that one half, when we split that pizza into sixths instead, that three of those segments shaded in is the same as one half of the circle shaded in. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at what do we need to do to this side? Well, we already know, instead of doing two times three, we'll do three times two, we'll go back the other way. So three times two gives us six, so that's the bottom number, multiplied by two gives us six, and then we do the same to the top number, one times two gives us two. So there we go, three sixths plus two sixths, and now we've got exactly the same rule as we looked at before, the bottom numbers don't add together, that just becomes the six, that stays as it is, because again, we've got three sixths here and two sixths here, and we just wanna know what's the total when uh, we add those together. How many sixths have we got all together? Well, we've got five of those sixths all together. Three plus two gives us five, and there's our answer, five sixths. So you can see how there's this kind of like extra step here where you've got to think about converting both fractions into uh, fractions that have the same number at the bottom, the same denominator. And we've done that here. One half is the same as three sixths. We've just written it differently. One third is the same as two sixths. We've just written that differently. And then we've multiplied whatever we've had to multiply the bottom number by to get to that. We multiply the top number by as well. 
the same again here, and then we've got three sixths plus two sixths gives us five sixths. Nice and simple. Let's have a look at one more example. This is our final, final example for this video. We've got two fifths plus one third. So we've got two fifths plus one third. And we're just going to apply exactly the same principles that we looked at in the previous uh, example. So we've got to find a number that both of these go into at the bottom. Obviously, there's no kind of... Um, these don't divide into each other evenly, so 3 doesn't divide into 5 without leaving a remainder. 5 doesn't divide into 3 without leaving a remainder. So we, we end up with um, uh, no number that we can keep using at the bottom here. We've got to find a new number. And we find that just by multiplying those numbers together. 3 times 5 gives us 15. So there is our new denominator, just multiplying those two together. So let's convert the two fifths into fifteenths, and then we'll convert the one third into fifteenths as well. So what's two fifths uh, into fifteenths? Well, again, think, what do I need to do to this five to turn it into 15? I need to times it by three. So five times three is 15. Whatever I do to the bottom number, I have to do to the top number. So what's two times three? Well, two times three is six. And then we've got to do the same here. What do I need to do to turn the 3 into 15? I need to times it by 5. 1 times 5 gives us 5. So remember, this fraction and this fraction represent exactly the same amount. We've just written them in different ways. 2 fifths is the same as 6 fifteenths. And 1 third is the same as 5 fifteenths. And so we've got our bottom number our denominator is 15th, and then we just add the top two numbers together. 6 plus 5 gives us 11, 11 fifteenths. And there's our answer. And again, hopefully you can remember from earlier, that's exactly the answer that we got when we did it graphically. So there we go. That's how we add fractions together. Exactly the same principles apply when we look at subtraction. Uh, so that's nice and straightforward. We just follow the exact same process, except of course we subtract rather than add at that final stage there. So hopefully that's given you a little bit more insight into how to do uh, addition with fractions and uh, we'll continue to produce more math videos as time goes on so stay tuned for those. All that remains in this video is to say thank you very much for watching.